More advanced 3D prints often consist of multiple parts. Here, we'll design a quick and simple annular joint to connect such parts. We'll do this for a simple enclosure, both cylinder and box shape. Let's start by creating a new design in Fusion 360 to create the cylinder. We'll first construct a new component. Our cylinder is going to be comprised of a circle base. So let's create that at the origin with a diameter of 40 millimeters. Let's finish this sketch. We'll extrude it up 40 millimeters and create a shell of one millimeter on the inside. There will be a top and a bottom part to this. So we'll slice this object in two parts. First, we'll create a mid plane between the top and the bottom. And we'll use that mid plane to slice the body in half. And now we will have a bottom and a top part. Our joint is going to be made out of a profile which will revolve around. Our sketch should be on this edge. In order to do that, we'll first create an axis through the cylinder and then create a plane through this axis. So now we can create a sketch on this plane. Our profile will start out in the bottom component and we'll leave a little bit of space between uh, the top part and the, our joint. Um, we'll do this because uh, this will be our top part and if you would have the line all the way over here, the profile over here, there would be very little room between the two parts and uh, the fit might be too tight. So we'll go out and go up a bit, say 1.5 millimeters. Then we'll go in, in, and this is the part where we'll actually cut into the top part. It only has to be like a tiny bit, so 1.1 uh, millimeter will be just fine. Let's get a bit of room there. We'll go to the top, go back. Now we could just go up and then finish off our part, but I found it's better to have a bit of an angle here. Say so something around this. This will help align our part, uh, our two parts together and will just make it a, a lot easier to snap them together. From there, we can just loop back mm, somewhere over there to our base. And let's keep a little bit of an, uh, a slope here, so we'll have some extra rigidity. And that's our main shape. We'll round off some of these edges. All right. And let's do some more fillets over there, over there. And these two, especially this one, will take most of the load. So we'll get a nice curve over there. And this should do. Let's inspect and see that this is proper thickness. That seems good. So let's finish this sketch 
and go back to our shaded view, visual style, shaded with visible edges. What we'll do now is revolve this profile around. So we'll go to revolve, select our profile and revolve it around our cylinder. And we'll join it to the bottom part. Our top part does not yet have the little cutout. In order to do that, we'll select our top part, go combine. Then we'll select as a tool our bottom part and we'll cut, uh, cut out the bottom part from the top part. And we want to keep our bottom part. So have keep tools selected, press OK. And now you'll see that we'll have a little cutout in our top part. So that's all for this little uh, test shape. We can send it to the printer by going to bottom, save as STL, save as STL, okay. And top, save as STL, okay. I'm using the Prusa printer, so I'm going to use the Prusa slicer to import our STL files and we'll distribute them over the build plate. To print these, I found out that a quality of 15 millimeter layer height works well with a brim. And I'll go into slicing. And you might be able to make out that there's a small cutout in our top part. And indeed, there's a small protrusion in our bottom part. So let's go ahead and print these. Here you can see the resulting print. They came out pretty well. There's a bit of a rough edge to them. The two halves, they line up nicely and they snap together with just a bit of force. And it's pretty simple to pop them loose as well. It took quite a few iterations to get to this design. One of the problems is that the parts wouldn't align properly because there was no inward bend to help along. So these two parts simply didn't want to join. One thing that did work was not having this protruding edge. Simply having a flat edge was enough to have a pretty tight friction connection between the two parts. Now let's look at how we can design the box enclosure. Starting out in Fusion 360 with a new design, we'll create a new component. For this box, we'll start out with a rectangle. Centered at the origin of 40 by 40 millimeters. Let's extrude this up 40 millimeters. And we'll shell it out one millimeter. Let's get the whole part. body one millimeter to create a top and a bottom part I'll create a mid plane and we'll split this body using that mid plane What we'll be doing is drawing a profile and sweeping it around this inner edge. We'll draw the profile on a mid plane between the back and the, uh, the front and the back edge. So in wireframe, we'll start out in the bottom part leave a bit of a gap again between the top part and our joint because it's already going to be a really snug fit. From here we'll go up a decent amount, go to the top part and create a small little connection. Notice that it's not actually touching 
and uh, while well, it is touching it's not actually cutting into the top part that's because because of the rectangular shape and uh, there isn't much room for the joint to bend so uh, any cutout or protrusion would really uh, limit connecting the two joints together again to ease with alignment we'll create a bend and we'll go this way and ease into the bottom part so that's our main outline let's round off some of these edges In particular, this edge is going to take a lot of strain. And we'll round off these edges a tiny bit as well. So if we finish this sketch, and go back into shaded mode. We'll sweep around this part or this profile to create our joints. For that, we'll select our profile and our path, which will be the inner edge here. So, holding Command key, I'm going to select all the edges. And we'll join it to the bottom part. And that's it. Now the bottom part will fit into the top part. And because there's no cutouts, we don't have to do a combine bodies. To print it, we'll save it as an STL. And then the top part will open our STL files in our slicer. I'm using a Prusa printer, so I'll have a Prusa slicer. I'll distribute the parts over the build plate. And I'll slice it at 0.50 millimeter layer height. And check that our edge is coming through. And as you can see, there is a slight protrusion here. So this seems good. So let's send it to the printer. So I printed these parts using PLA and the results are pretty good. The parts hold together pretty well and you can easily get them apart. And it's not too hard to snap them together again. But of course I ran into some issues. The most prominent being that this joint for a rectangular shape is much more sensitive to uh, having the right dimensions. This part wouldn't fit together because the protrusion was too large and the wall was too thick so I had to sand it off and even then the parts didn't fit together well. Another problem was aligning two parts together. This part was missing the inward bend so they wouldn't align properly. And again I found that not having a protrusion and cutout at all also worked for this part. If you make the, the joint long enough, you'll have enough friction to keep the parts together. I'm not sure if you can call this an annular joint for this rectangle shape. Uh, I think it needs to be a circle for that. But it works and it's a decent connection between two parts. If you're trying this out yourself, I suggest you try it out without protrusion first. And if you need more holding power, uh, do a protrusion and a cutout. If you enjoyed this video please leave a like if you didn't enjoy it please let me know in the comment what i can uh, improve for the next time